Hello everyone and welcome back to In the Greenhouse, the little behind the scenes series where we get to talk a little bit about Siri, our series, and the natural world. And I am very excited today because we get to focus on some of the natural world part. I have collected up a few of the questions that you guys have given me about things related to the natural world and I also have some exciting things to show you inside of our little greenhouse. Those bamboo bloomed and you know what? I think I can put up with them because they have actually turned into blazing bamboo that have really beautiful flowers and I applied quite a bit because I was feeling a little bit ho-hum about it I did apply quite a bit of the uh, bioorganic plant food to this bamboo and it appears to prolifically be covered in flowers now so that's kind of kind of fascinating we'll go ahead and repropagate that one and drive the price up just a little bit to try to match it and we also have, by the way, this fragrant fern. So I'm very excited to see the beautiful hibiscus flower spread onto a fern. That's very pretty. We're gonna get that one going too. And we're also gonna set it to sell for a lot more, just in case. But yes, so today, Heather, who has been a longtime viewer, thank you so much, Heather, has submitted a question that just struck right to the core of my heart. What does a biologist do? And what is their day like? And Again, I'm not a biologist yet. I've switched majors several times and <laughs> I've come back to my first major of biology because it is my passion. I can't finish it right now because I'm kind of in an interesting place in my life, getting ready to move again. So there's no point in really starting. I have about two years left um, in three different degrees. <laughs> But for my biology degree, I have about a year and a half left and I have to move in a year. So I decided to wait to go back to school until we're settled. Uh, you just kind of make those kinds of choices when you start, start life with someone. But with that said, I'm not an official biologist yet, but I love the field. I love the diversity in it. I love biology in general. So I'll do my best to answer that. I consider myself a biologist in training. So, we're, like, I'm just trying to say a disclaimer, I'm not a biologist. <laughs> but basically, biology and bi being a biologist covers a huge amount of, of research and jobs and positions. So it's really difficult to say, oh, this is what a biologist does. Because a biologist can include research, learning about the natural world in terms of plants and animals, ecosystems, habitats, genetics, the care of plants and animals. Uh, it could have to do with the management of wildlife resources, the uses of wildlife resources. It could do with agriculture. It could do with some disciplines. I'm sure you guys have heard of like a marine biologist or maybe an ecologist or a primatologist or an uh, ornithologist who studies like birds. You know, it gets really specific. If you pick an animal and you pick a field, <laughs> then there's going to be someone in the biology field who focuses only on that, only on cats, only on dogs, only on heart disease in dogs, <laughs> you know? Uh, I knew one guy who focused only on studying the minute differences in the bone structures of salamanders. It can get that specific. I'm pretty sure he was one of three world experts. <gasps> Look how big those beautiful flowers are! Oh wow! Fragrant fern, I love you! But he was one of three world experts in being that good at knowing the minute differences uh, that could occur <laughs> in, in salamander bones. Um, I know that some people probably roll their eyes at that and they're like, what the heck is, like, why are these people so obsessed with these things? And it's, it's the passion. I really can't explain a biologist's passion unless you too also have that passion for, for nature, for the natural world, then you know what I'm talking about, where people look at you funny that you get so excited over finding a plant on a walk, but it's just your passion. It's just what you love to do. But biology, again, it's a tremendously huge field. It can cover uh, like microbiology, which may just focus on the spread of diseases and disease prevention. It could cover uh, environmental sciences and conservation, being a park ranger or an endangered species recovery program, which is actually one of the things that I wish I could participate in in the future. <laughs> It could be a management plan for the land again, and that has to do a lot with business. So you might be actually a biologist employed by a company, and that company might say, look, we have to harvest this much lumber. Here's the forest that we're allotted to do that in. How can we manage this at, at optimum resources for profit and for sustainability? You hope for the sustainability part at least. 
They probably are more just sticking to the laws. But about the laws, as a biologist, you might have to dabble in uh, politics. So you might work in politics uh, to try to come up with some things uh, to protect the land, or it, depending on who you work for and what you value, if you value money more, you might work for lobbyists as a biologist to try to get uh, people who have the money the best deal. It's the truth of it. Um, yeah, you might work in biotechnology, which might cover like food sciences, medicine, again, comes back to the agriculture. Agriculture is a huge business, a big deal. You might focus on um, perhaps just education, which is also one of my favorite things to do. You might just educate others about the natural world. You might do that directly as an educator, or you might do that uh, indirectly the way that I do um, as an entertainer. You might do it as a science writer. You might be an artist. You can be a biologist. You can get a degree in biology so that you can go on to study life science illustration and specialize, like spend your life drawing as scientifically accurate as possible animals and plants, which is actually essential for getting accurate scientific data and accurate information for textbooks and uh, scientific articles and things like that. Those pictures that you see that people have drawn of a really detailed, like, owl or something had to come somewhere and people will specialize in gaining the skills that are needed to portray a feather in just the right way, almost as if you took a picture of it. Um, now that photography has shown up, I don't think it's as essential as skill as it used to be, but back in the age of discovery, it meant a lot to have really good science illustration skills. Uh, you might also just work in mathematics. You might actually never even see an animal if you work as a biologist because you're, you're stuck in offices or politics, or you might focus exclusively on mathematics and building model ecosystems or uh, using math to solve biology problems from a, like long range distance. You might study just genetics or just things in a petri dish. Um, it's really... <laughs> amazingly diverse. You might be a forensic biologist who helps solve crimes by studying uh, the the scenes, you know. You might analyze the soil content levels on someone's shoe uh, to help try to solve a crime. It is literally that diverse. Like, the field of biology stretches much broader than most people give it credit for. So if you are even minutely interested in the natural world and considering maybe one day making it a field of study or a career, if you have any other passions and interests, I am pretty sure that you can combine it. My passions are biology, nursing, and sociology. Those are the three things that I'm working on degrees in. And I one day hope to combine those things so that I can try to go to hot spot places around the world where things are critically endangered and yet the humans are also suffering because you have to understand that if someone's children are starving, they don't care if that's the last panda on the planet. They're going to shoot it and turn its hide into black market money so that they can feed their children. And I hope one day to be able to take the position where I can go in and go, okay, these people are hungry, their village is not thriving, they're having a hard time trying to catch up and keep their kids here from instead of moving to the city. So of course they're going to hunt these like rare buffalo. And you wanna come in and see how you can try to fix that problem on all levels so that you can help people understand why it's so important to preserve those, say, a buffalo, but also understand that if you're gonna make someone sacrifice something by preserving that wildlife, then there is a real cost in that for them. And you need to make sure that you can somehow, maybe through ecotourism, maybe through helping them set up some, some new wells or something to have clean water or set up something so that their agriculture can really take off, there has to be a payback for those people or else when push comes to shove, often they won't protect what can't protect themselves, which is kind of the natural world. So that's my goal. So you can really take any of your passions and combine them and turn them into something. It just is if you truly feel passionate about it. So that's biology, kind of in a nutshell. <laughs> A really tiny nutshell, even though I've talked for several, several minutes and we've just been sitting here watching people buy my weird bamboo, my weird bamboo plants. Buy my pretty flower thingy. Come on, guys. I know it only has two flowers, but I know you want it. Woo! So, taking a deep breath. What is my greatest wildlife experience so far? Uh, there's been a few, actually. I would probably say 
helping out on a uh, rescue that had large wild cats was probably the best uh, wildlife experience I've ever had. There were tigers in very large cages, um, lions and things like that that had been uh, surrendered or taken from people who owned them illegally and couldn't be returned unfortunately to the wild or to uh, just there's too many of them. There's hundreds and hundreds of unwanted tigers in the United States, uh, especially in Oklahoma and Texas area. And um, I worked there, I volunteered for a while, and it was probably one of the most significant experiences I've ever had to be surrounded by that many wild animals and to work so hard to try to take care of them. So that was amazing um, because it, it also kind of broke your heart a little bit because you realize this is so cool that I can see a tiger every day. And then the, the longer you saw it, the more you realized that you wished that you couldn't see that tiger. You wished that that tiger didn't have to live in a little cage. You wished that that tiger hadn't been bred for someone's entertainment because they wanted a cool pet and now it has to sit there and rely on donations just to survive in, in a little cage. So it, it definitely helped shape me. Uh, so it's not like a super happy wildlife experience, but it's a pretty cool one. Uh, the other ones I've had though are like when you're out on hiking in the mountains. When I moved to the mountains a couple years ago, this is, this is amazing. It's beautiful here. But moving to the mountains and then, come on you guys, buy my plant. Just buy it already. Uh, like going on hikes and finding places where like, oh chipmunks, like every single time. I have never seen chipmunks in real life and there's chipmunks that just are native here and you'll be walking on the path and you look down, there's a chipmunk running by your foot and it's the cutest, most amazing thing in the world. And seeing places where beavers have chewed on trees around here or once we were hiking and we turned and there were a bunch of deer just like right there and they were just kind of looking at us and chewing and looking at us and chewing and then kind of like bumping their babies a little bit closer to them and chewing. Uh, so anytime where you kind of, in a good way, come across unexpected wildlife is always so fun to me. Uh, if you guys have ever come across like wildlife just unexpectedly while you're walking, let me know because I think those are really fun experiences. Uh, sometimes they can be scary, but those are f some fun ones. Hmm, and then let's see, really quickly, my favorite animals. I honestly can't answer this because I don't have a favorite animal. Uh, every time I look at a certain animal or start studying a certain animal, that's my current favorite animal. It's like, this is so amazing. Did you know the Roadrunner can, has like little X-shaped marks when it walks? And did you know that like this like gecko doesn't have any eyelids so it licks its eyes? Or did you know that like this salamander can go months without eating? Or did you know that like... Uh, I mean, so basically it's like that. Anything anything I, I look at and focus on that has to do with animals or the natural world, I get so excited about that that's my favorite right then and there. And nobody else, like, it, it just does that every time. I just don't have a flat out favorite. Um, but like my favorite sea animal, probably dolphins. Uh, amazingly, stunningly intelligent. We are only just now really tapping in to the depths of how intelligent dolphins are. It blows me away. I think that the way some countries now acknowledge dolphins and some of the higher primates to be, uh, to have what they call humanhood, uh, where they, they are expected to be treated with dignity and with uh, a lot more respect. They're not treated like like animals, like a cow or something. They're treated like an entity within themselves. I think that that is amazing, an amazing move because the more we learn about the neuroscience of dolphins and the higher primates and even pigs, actually, <laughs> the more we realize that the gap in cognitive awareness, well, awareness is a highly strong word. I should say cognitive ability is not as big as we once thought between ourselves and some of those guys. So dolphins are probably my favorite sea animal. Whales, uh, sea slugs, I think are amazing because they're beautiful and the way that they, they breed by stabbing each other uh, <laughs> with their parts is amazingly interesting to me. Um, I think sea urchins are kind of interesting. I love things you can find in tide pools even though I have never seen a tide pool in real life yet. Uh, star, sea stars are pretty cool. I think they're pretty neat. I think crabs are hilarious for some reason. 
I really love this one species of shrimp in Japan who spend their entire life like making little tunnels and then they have a mate that comes into the tunnel and they build like a little home under the sand and they just stay there like their entire life. It's really cute. They have all these different tunnels. Um, See what I mean? The more I think about it, the more I'm like, that one's my favorite. No, that one. No, this one too. So it's really, really hard for me to pick. Man, you guys, rejected my tree. So rude. I guess I'll have to lower the price on it. It'll, it does only have two flowers. I guess there's no point in watering an empty pot. Come here, butterfly. Eh, gotcha. But, okay. And then, favorite bird. Uh, I love Birds of Paradise. I really, really love the Queen Victoria's Crown Pigeon. Um, I love my Gouldian Finches. I think those are probably my favorite birds. I love the Catbird, even though some people consider it a nuisance around here. There we go. Got my little Blazing Bamboo. I bet this one's going to sell for so much. So, let's see. What other? F I don't really think I have any other favorite birds. I'm going to sell you for, like, buku bucks because of all your flowers. But, and then let's plant you. Let me think. Uh, oh, and then favorite plant? <laughs> I don't really have a favorite again. I probably would say um, everything I, I grow in my house. What are you called again, my little plant? I have a really highly propagating house plant that is absolutely everywhere and its leaves are beautiful and cover everything. Uh, and it, it, it spreads really rapidly so I keep making cuttings and putting it up everywhere but I can't remember what it's called because I've never had to really know the name of this little house plant but I will look up the name but yeah so I really I'm sorry I don't have very many favorites but I'm sure you guys do so please let me know about your favorite uh, house plants or your favorite normal plants your favorite birds I really love ferns like I'm a huge fern fan and I love mushrooms I think they're delicious and I think they're fun because they they might pop up for only like a couple hours out in the wild so I like to, when I'm hiking I like to take pictures of mushrooms because I can walk the same hike again and again and again and it'll never it'll never quite look the same it, when mushroom season's here because I know that the mushrooms are going to go away you go away you uh, go away you and that I know that the mushrooms are going to be gone next time I walk there so I think that they kind of spice things up pretty fun look at that dragonfly Dra he got away um oh my goodness oh and my least favorite animal <laughs> This is going to sound so weird, but probably uh, monkeys, orangutans, gorillas, things like that. For some reason, I'm scared of them. They kind of they kind of freak me out a little bit. I know it's ridiculous. I know it's a little shameful, but uh, it's true. I don't really like the primate family. Um, <laughs> they're just, it's, it's just, they're kind of weird looking. They kind of freak me out a little bit. Um, I actually even like spiders and things more than I like monkeys. So... <laughs> So there's that, but enough of my rambling. There's still more questions to try to get through when it comes to stuff about- Come here, come here, no green butterfly! No! Green butterfly! I think it's time, you guys. I think it's time that we upgrade our net. Should we just- Ooh! Maybe we should just, like, wait. And buy the golden butterfly net. Just boom! And then we can catch the butterflies. Whew! But yeah, there's a lot more more animals and pet and uh, personal questions, and I'll do my best to get to all of them. But this was just to kind of focus on what is a biologist and some of my favorite animals. So please let me know if you guys are interested in biology, if you ever want to become a biologist. Uh, what got you interested? Uh, for me, it was just my passion for the natural world and that my curiosity can... I love, I, I'm so curious. I just can't stop being curious about it. So why not? Why not enter a field where you get to endlessly learn about these things? Also, what are you turning into? Fascinating. We'll have to keep an eye on this guy right here. Uh, and then also let me know your favorite plants and animals. What are they? Why? What's your least favorite? Because that's always kind of a fun question to flip around on people. I mean, who would have guessed that I, I like spiders more than monkeys, you know? <laughs> All right, I'm going to get some of these plants sold off, and I will see you guys back here later. Bye-bye.